Hi, I spent about 20,000 Reaper in preparation for this video. <laughs> Let's get into it. So, the top five bows in Fortnite Save the World. First and foremost, I do have a video on all of the best bows in the entire game where I go in depth on all of these. That is an up to date video with everything you need to know. Link to that down below. That is a more uh, even Steven video where I was simply just evaluating all of the bows on their own. I also have the best perks for each of these bows linked down below. The perks do change based on which bow you're using on occasion i will be saying for today's video i am running reload fire rate creating her damage on every single bow that supports it there are a couple of edge cases like the boom bow which does not have a reload perk and then you get weapons like the night owl where uh, i did go with these perks but a six perk with the you know low health damage might be better depending on which six perk you're running and love song which is a bow that uh, yeah i kept these perks the way they are because of the way the six perk functions it didn't matter in the end the love song will not be on our list sorry to spoil it i also wanted to add that there are uh, a couple of weapons that are essentially the same and that is why we're doing a top five list the top 10 list to keep in with the theme would only exclude like two bows and that is uh fairly boring if you think about the uh, scrap shot and the instigator i could show that these weapons are identical uh the scrap shot is the uh, uh the scavenger variant of the instigator so you can see it's cheaper cost lower durability and identical stats and the Nightfire bow is basically the same. It technically has more damage, but look at the difference on that. It's less than 200 out of 99,000, which is ridiculous. That is essentially the same weapon. So what I'm so what I'm saying here, the Scrapshot, Nightfire, and Instigator, all three of those bows are basically the same weapon. For the purposes of today's video, that means we're only really working with like nine unique weapons. And on top of that, all of these bows have the same fire rate, one mag size, same reload speed, because I kept the perks consistent they have almost the exact same stats each of these bows the only difference being the damage and most of the bows have a two and a half multiplier for headshot damage whereas the rest of them you know they vary on occasion but for the most part 2.5 is the headshot multiplier so they're all basically the same weapons with the only varying being how they fire you know the explosion whether or not there is one and the six perks so without further ado Let's get into the top five bows. Although there will be one honorable mention I'm going to mention now. The number six slot, if I was going to do it, is the boom bow. The boom bow was the first bow to be released in this game. It unfortunately does not have a reload perk. I would have placed this higher on the list, swapping the number four slot if it did have a reload perk. But unfortunately, with its tiny little explosion and very low DPS, it is actually, as far as I did the math, the lowest damage per second bow in the game. I understand that it's an explosive weapon and it can hit multiple targets targets but as you'll see a lot of the other bows do that job quite a bit better it's basically the same as like the compression burster but the compression burster is a little way more towards impact it's not going to be on our list today but yeah the boom bow sits in the honorable mention number six slot where the list begins is actually kind of a surprise the vendor tech seeker is the only bow in the game that i could find that did enough single target damage to justify being viable and what i mean is there are bows like the love song and the and the night owl which actually do really good single target damage but single target damage isn't very impressive when you're shooting only one target and you're reloading every single shot and that uh, is is typically only okay if you're using like a storm king's wrath or a pot shot but those explosive weapons make up for that single target damage However, with the Vindertex Seeker, you have those three extra projectiles and you can charge up the damage. It does a ton of damage, does a really, really good headshot multiplier, and I could find that eliminating Mist Monsters and Smashers were super easy with this weapon. It was actually proficient enough to be somewhat considerable if you were going to use it as your primary weapon. I know that some of the other bows are really good for single target, like the Instigator, where it can up the uh, damage from all sources by 20% when you hit a target. However, that doesn't affect mini bosses, which is like the only time you would ever need that bonus. And if it doesn't affect mini bosses, then you have a lot of other better options in this game. So yeah, number five slot, in my opinion, goes to the Vindertech Seeker. For the number four slot, I'm sticking with the powder keg. I've always been a fan of this weapon. I always really liked how it operated. The fact that it has a big fat explosion, and I don't use audio for my footage in these videos, but the explosion is super satisfying. Maybe I'll record a clip for you guys. And that is so good for crowd clearing but it is terrible against mist monsters if you were going to be running encampments and you for whatever reason didn't want to use a vacuum tubo or xenon the powder keg would be really good for the regular enemies and the vindertech seeker would be phenomenal for taking out the mist monsters the two pair really well together but unfortunately uh both of those weapons combined is basically what we'll be looking at later on so let's move right up on the list 
Uh, the Cloud Burst, going to be kind of a surprising pick. I literally cannot show you why it's so good because in this current update that I'm making this video, you cannot see the cloud. I'm sorry, but what's happening here is when you eliminate an enemy, a cloud of steam appears. Uh, a lot of the steampunk weapons actually have that ability and the Cloud Burst is no different. However, when you are using Stoneheart Farah in support or the lead, every single time you hit an enemy with that cloud of steam, it, it activates her ability. So with Stoneheart Farah in the lead, every single time that cloud of steam does damage it'll just branch out five times doing tons of extra damage to stoneheart pharah it's not quite as good as the the vacuum tube bow because the vacuum tube bow will chain to the different enemies and then branch off beyond that we'll get to that in a little bit but it's a nice ability to have and i really don't want people sleeping on the cloud burst because it's a lot better than you think it has pretty good single target damage pretty good dps it's a very very run-of-the-mill weapon with a nice little area of effect damage with that cloud steam all right this is the moment that is going to define this video because i think I am going to shock a lot of you. I do not believe that the Xenon Bow is the best bow in the game. I, I That is going to be a shock because I know that by far the Xenon Bow is the most popular weapon in the game. Uh, it's even more popular than all of the mythic weapons. It is commonly referred to and revered as a pseudo mythic weapon. But if you let me explain, the Vacuum Tube Bow hits so much harder. If you compare the stats here, you'll see the Vacuum Tube Bow does about 30% more damage. It hits way more targets. In fact, I even drew a diagram to illustrate exactly how strong the vacuum tube bow is so you've got our little lightning bolt here hitting the first enemy which then activates five more Farah hits which can hit five more enemies in theory typically those enemies will be the same one as the chain lightning but in a theoretical perfect situation you'll also chain to another six enemies from all of the vacuum tube you know chain lightning and then every single enemy that gets hit by that activates Farah's ability another 30 times which is just bonkers by my math assuming you hit in a perfect spread just like this and this does chain between enemies on occasion you can hit for 42 enemies affected by the vacuum tube bow now that doesn't happen perfectly every single time but anybody who's fired this weapon into an encampment is going to know exactly what i mean in fact i actually have a lot of testing footage here where i am using a 106 vacuum tube bow against fire enemies and you can see that it is annihilating these. And this is like a 140 zone, and it's just destroying all of them. I just wanted to see if the Chain Lightning crits, which it appears to, by the way. You can review that footage if you'd like to see for yourself. But yeah, it is an insanely powerful weapon, and it's just ridiculous. Now, the Xenon Bow is by no means bad. I still consider it to be generally the best bow in the game, and that's why I'm giving the number one spot to the Vacuum Tube Bow, but the Xenon Bow is deserving of all of the praise that it's ever gotten, because the Xenon Bow is energy. Now... Being locked to energy means it's going to affect pretty much all elemental enemies equally, and the Vacuum Tube Bow is going to be locked to nature. Now, the Vacuum Tube Bow is only going to be as great as it is in water zones, and in a water zone and a nature zone, it just completely wipes the floor with the Xenon Bow. It's a little more even in a nature zone because it's only going to be doing two-thirds of its damage to those enemies, but in a fire zone, the Xenon Bow is definitely better. However, the Xenon Bow is a weapon that is perfect for just using as your main primary and then just turning your brain off it is going to cleave through all the enemies all the walls all the shielders all of the riot huskies it's going to go through everything i don't know if i have any footage of this but anybody who's used this for like a daily challenge or a quest log where you're trying to destroy stuff that gets hit in one shot you just shoot the xenon bow into the buildings and then all the gnomes die all at the same time i'm pretty sure that's a bug but it's been here for years so it counts it's definitely really nice for doing challenges and i am somebody who always looks for a xenon bow in those different uh, venture zones so the xenon bow is generally the best but oof, if you are able to hit your shots it's a lot less forgiving the vacuum tube bow does way more damage to ignore and it is significantly more powerful that said if they ever nerf this weapon again to no longer activate Farah's ability, you're going to lose about 30 extra enemies of damage, and I do believe the Xenon Bow would be better than the Vacuum Tube Bow in that case, but so long as it is chaining with Farah, which I do believe is an intended feature, the Vacuum Tube Bow is just way too strong, and uh, I just cannot, I cannot consider it to be better. Then again, I want to reiterate one final time that these weapons are trading blows. Uh, everywhere where the Xenon Bow is good is where the Z Vacuum Tube Bow falls flat, and vice versa. If I could tie these weapons for this video i would but i want to put the vacuum bow in the number one slot and uh hopefully my explanation uh carries some weight there because uh it's definitely something that requires an asterisk if i ever see anybody in the comments saying either one of these bows is better i really hope that they're going to explain why because it's uh, a little more complicated than just one or the other 
thank you guys so much for watching videos like this take a ton of work you have no idea how much math went into the background of this i am currently looking at a monitor full of spreadsheets of data uh for anybody who wants a little bit of extra scene you know behind the scenes stuff here i actually downcrafted all of these weapons to 106 just so i could get consistent data i even reached out to Cavson, who runs the fortnite db website who uh shared with me his entire spreadsheet of data which i'm not allowed to show you guys because uh, his website has you know a lot of information on weapons i've got 2400 lines of data here uh he was definitely very helpful in this so shout out to him uh thank you guys so much for watching feel free to use code message to check out i really appreciate it and uh i'll see you guys in the next one and then